If you want to add 10 mile an hour clubhead speed, try the speed stick routine. This is a routine that Martin Borgmeier has used to become one of the longest hitters on the planet. I'm also going to incorporate some of the methods I've used with golfers of all skill levels and ages to increase their clubhead speed, including a long driver that we managed to take up to 155 mile an hour clubhead speed. Whenever you do speed training, it's absolutely essential to make sure that you're not performing under fatigue. So our central nervous system has to be in a recovered state. For example, we wanna make sure we have good physical and mental recovery, so we're not moving sluggishly or tired and we've eaten and are hydrated to make sure we give the best opportunity to actually move in with the intent we desire. At the start of your speed routine, it's essential that you warm up properly. The key there is making sure you get your heart rate elevated and your muscles activated, ready to perform high intensity motion. To start the routine, we just need to take the lightest speed stick and do some single arm swings. This is just to get the arms moving as they're the fastest moving part of the body. And we just wanna create some tempo and feeling. So I'm just gonna do a very simple right arm swing trying to feel like we're, we're moving about so we're not static. You can see how I'm getting some full turns, moving around 50% effort. And then as I just get a little bit loosened up, I'm just then gonna go a bit faster, but don't wanna go any more than around 80%. We're gonna do 10 swings, and then we're gonna do the same with a lead arm. Now with a lead arm, we'd obviously have a straighter arm in the swing, but in this particular motion, it doesn't matter if we get a flexed elbow because that can just help get that little bit longer swing. However, if you can keep the arm straight and control it still, that's absolutely fine. But we just wanna build that speed up. And as we can see, try and move dynamically throughout the whole motion. Now, still using the lighter stick, we're gonna take up a normal setup and we're gonna do a full swing. But we're just gonna do a full swing at around 50% your effort, just once. Then we're gonna do another at 60% once. And then another 70, all the way until we get to 90%, just one of each. Now we're gonna move on to just four swings repeated with max intent. I don't want you to think of anything technical. I don't want you to be really disciplined on the number of swings that we're doing through this routine because remember, we wanna stay fresh and not be moving under fatigued. So we're just gonna do one swing as fast as possible. No technical thoughts. And I want you to watch how I'm moving. Very dynamic, very flowy. I'm using the ground to create some energy. And I'm pushing out. So. Think of those long drivers, they're almost dancing around on the floor to get that energy started. Just one more. Now we're gonna move on to the main speed session part. We've primed our body, we've got our body moving and ready. This is now where we try to make the gains over a period of time. The key component to speed training effectively is having a speed radar. I use a PRGR. These are highly effective and reliable. I've measured these against TrackMan and the numbers are consistent. You can also use a driver and ball with this so that can help show you your actual progression with your speed numbers. The reason we need to use a radar is we need to objectively understand where our speed is at on every given session. And we also need to record the numbers as we go so we can look for trends over the sessions and over the weeks. If you'd like to buy a PRGR radar, there's a link in the description. So with the radar now in position, we're gonna do three swings to begin with, maximum effort. This is really important. It's going back to that technical feeling where we're just letting the body go. We're trying to move our whole body as fast as we can, however that may be. 117. 119. 120. So they're my first three swings. Now I'm going to have a little breather. So we're going to probably have up to a minute's rest. You can have a little bit less, but the more rest, the more effective, because that gives us a chance to recover properly because we're moving at high intensity. Whenever we're speed training, always think of what a sprinter would do. If we was going to run 100 meters and we wanted to get quicker of every 100 meters that we run, we'd need a good rest period in between. Otherwise, we're just working on endurance and that is very different to speed. Now that we've had that rest period in between, we're gonna do three more swings. 
but I want you to have roughly 15 to 20 seconds in between each swing. So we're still moving with that max intent, 119 to catch for breath. We're gonna have up to 15, 20 seconds. And then we're gonna repeat that process until we've completed full six swings with the lightest stick. 119 and 120. So now that that's been performed as the first set, we're gonna have at least a two minute break now. We, again, we need that long rest period before we move on to the second set with the medium weighted stick. On paper, through my findings especially, this medium weighted stick would be closest to what the driver speed would be or what your potential driver speed would be. So we're gonna do three swings again, as fast as we can. 111. 12, 118. So I've got my three numbers to begin with. Feedback of the session, we wanna be feeling like we keep that energy high. So whenever we're speed training, it's always good to focus on those key biomechanical principles. So number one being that intent, which we're always gonna be doing, especially if we've primed our body. Number two would be trying to get those hands further and moving longer in the backswing. So a longer hand path. So for this next three, swings, I'm just gonna force that and see if that helps with the speed. So 117, so that's a bit higher on average. Again, up to 15, 20 second breather, long hand path, get the hands moving high to the ceiling. 120 and 118. Now another two to three minute rest period. So now we're moving on to the heaviest stick. Now, in order for us to keep some speed in this, because it's gonna move naturally much slower with the same effort, we need to get some more momentum on this heavy, heavier object. So the final speed principle would be that feeling of, remember keeping the intent, the high hands, long hand path, and then trying to sequence through the ground early. So pushing out of that lead side, so we can almost create that that heaviest implement being pulled along a little bit easier. So we're gonna do those three swings, same principles. So 110, which is a good number. 111 and 111. Now a little rest again before we repeat the same process as we've done with the other ones for the final three. And now the final set, going back to the light stick, if we've utilized our rest periods effectively, if we've applied with maximal intent, we should see an increase in some shape or form of what the first set was with the light stick. So same routine again, six more swings, see if we can get that jump in speed following those speed principles. 124, 130, 128, so straight away, a good jump in my speed, rest, repeat. When following this routine, focus on applying this at least two to three times a week, recording every session as you go, trying to see where that progression is. Don't expect it to change every single session, but expect a positive trend in the right direction over that six week period. And also don't forget to measure this with your driver from time to time to see if you're transferring it from the speed sticks to driver and ball. As we said at the start of the routine, it's really important to warm up physically. If you need a proper warm up to follow, watch this video next.